a lot, a vast majority of people are uneducated about the free tools that are out there to help you recover from a disaster. And any kind of virus infection on your computer is a disaster because uh, unless you don't think that having your personal information or your client's personal information stolen and read by someone you don't know is a disaster, if you don't think that's a disaster, then it's not. And if you don't think um, someone use your, using your computer to attack other people is not a disaster, that's your thing. But a lot of the time people don't think about the consequences of not resetting up their computer or even uh, restoring that Windows image or making a Windows, uh, a disk image of their Windows installation. It's just too much work for them and so what ends up happening, they're still part of the whole system that causes everybody else a lot of problems. So out of the 12,000 e spam emails we got, perhaps there was maybe a hundred or 200 computers out there only that ended up sending a spam message to us out of that whole group. And you divide 13,000 by 200 and you get um, you get 65. Is that right? Is that 1,300? Yeah, 13,000 divided by 2, okay, that's 65. So if there's 200 compromised computers out there and they're only sending a spam message to us once every six days, we're still going to get 12,000 spam messages. But the end user is probably not going to notice that his hard, uh, his hard drive isn't going to do much work at all. It doesn't take much bandwidth to send out a spam message. It doesn't take much bandwidth to send a, a virus over the internet. And these viruses are malicious. And they use that spam so that you're, you, you're going to think most of the spam that arrives because it's only 4%, 500 out of 12,000, because only 4% of the junk mail that arrives in your box actually has anything of any substance, you might just click on that spam message uh, and that four, you know, 4 out of 100 times and get yourself infected. It's just, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big circle. It's all, the numbers are so big, it's almost a matter of time um, that it, someone that's, you know, that you, they're, they're running Windows, if you want to do what you want to do without having to be overly cautious and encase yourself in so many restrictions that you're afraid to do this, that, or the other thing, that, you know, if you're going to use the internet and use it to a, um, to a good degree for research or, or to solve problems, um, it's just a matter of time that you're going to get hit by one of these things. And it could be that way, it could be even through a USB drive. There's been ten, there's been millions of dollars that have been stolen from banks as a part of this whole system that they have out there. And so the question is, if you know, if you're at least informed that you have some kind of uh, that a virus has been detected, don't assume that your antivirus software is going to remove it, for one. And two, do the right thing and do the equivalent of a reinstall in your operating system. And the quick way to do that, that only took me a half an hour to, um, to make the disk image of, uh, of, I have a 60 gigabyte disk image with about 20 gigabytes of programs and data on it. So the disk image files only end up being about 20 gigs, and so if you install, say, Ubuntu Linux on your second partition, or Open Solaris, or Haiku, or well, actually, I don't think part image they I don't think they ported part image over to Haiku, but whatever operating system you could find, hell, NetBSD, you know, plug them all, right? Um, you uh, you boot into that and you run part image, you could and you give yourself enough hard disk space for the operating system and about how much data, how much percent full your disk is, give it maybe five more gigs beyond that um, for the size of your second partition, you can save these hard disk files so you can go back if you ever, you can get a message, you ever have a virus, you can always go back in a matter of ten minutes you'll have your operating system back 
the way it was before. All you got to do is update it at that point. Do your updates, keep your virus up to date, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and you'll be you'll be okay, and you'll help solve this problem. And it is not a small problem; it's a very major problem. Uh, and even to this day, the professor that did research on Torpig now at UC Santa Barbara is constantly getting hit by denial of service attacks and retribution for the research that this guy did. And he's not the only person that's done research. There's a lot of other ones that have done research. There are security firms, SANS Institute, there's the Shadow Server Foundation, all these things, all these people are trying to work together to stop what is really a big threat. That even, uh, I think even President Obama had a speech about it, but a lot of the time people, uh, reporters just don't understand the problem, they don't understand the whole system and how it works together. And there's only, since there's such a small amount of people that do it, and people are, they think they're being level-headed by weighing reports from one end of the spectrum to the other and coming up with something in the middle, that just helps these people continue to do what they do, gain a stronger foothold on the internet, which was first designed to help us defend ourselves in the event of a nuclear attack and survive because we didn't have one failure point. Um, it's part of our natural, national defense, and you better believe it's, it's, it's an issue that needs to be dealt with. Um, and that's it. And it's not just a matter of your little firewall working in your operating system that you're going to block it. You know, Whatever question you have in your mind to say, well, isn't this or that, the answer is no. Um, the answer is, is until you get your operating system back to where it was before it was compromised, as far as an install or a restoration of a disk image, which could either cost you nothing but your time if you decide to use Linux or if you decide to use Norton Ghost, a couple hundred bucks, um, it's worth it both for yourself to reduce the amount of spam you get. It's all about being a good citizen. Um, it's not just about being reactive, but it's being about pro. It's about being proactive because the people who make this software rely on the fact that people are, aren't going to want to reinstall their operating system, aren't going to want to pay the 200 bucks for Ghost, aren't going to want to go through learning how to use Linux, aren't going to want to do this, aren't going to want to do that. Um, the guy that had his server compromised, um, that had his actions, his home PC compromised, was doing his YouTube videos. This guy, Big Bart, that was notified by his um, ISP, was that his, his computer was in effect a spam house. He didn't end up reinstalling his operating system. He still had the mentality, even at that point, that even though his virus software had actually not caught and allowed his system to become a spam house, he still didn't seem to realize that that wasn't the answer. He still relied on it. He still wanted to rely on it because that was what was most convenient for him, or that was the mentality that he's in, that someone else is going to do solve the problems for me, or the computer's going to solve the problem for me. Well, that's they, they love that. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what they want you to think. They want you to think when you go to that bad link that it's just spyware and it's harmless and it's annoying, yes, but harmless, that's not the truth. They do collect data off your hard drive. They do send it back to the mothership. They do sell it. People do s do use your credit card, card numbers that they <clears throat> that they collect, and all those things add up together to a really big problem for everybody on the internet that uses it. It's made email almost worthless now, and it's also um, made um, <clears throat> put a lot of people people's personal data in jeopardy every day there are hundreds if not thousands of new computers that come under the fold of some nebulous criminals control and that's the last thing you want to have happen to you and since you can't see it it's easy to rationalize that it's not going to happen to you or oh there's no virus here it's much better in this situation to be paranoid because like I said there's that the end game is for them to collect money to use your data, to use your social security number, to use your passwords, to use your, yeah, things you care about. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, you know, bullshit. I'm talking about things you care about, things that your clients may care about. 
And so <clears throat> that's why I say that your choice of operating system is also a choice of, of responsibility. And perhaps learning Linux or dealing with some of the quirks in it is the price to pay for a better internet for everybody. Um, and that's, I guess, all I really have to say about it. But um, in general, most people are, are their own worst enemies, and they, they have the absolute, they've trained themselves to be helpless and meek and not understand their computer and think their computer is going to solve problems for them and even very intelligent very highly skilled professional people are just absolutely end up just rationalizing away the very thing that would help save them from having their identity stolen or save their clients from having their identity stolen because they just don't actually want to deal with the problem it's head, heads in the sand so that's what I have to say, um, and you can see how it works. A lot of it is just very, it even goes down to the, the, the most minute details and some of the way that the, the antivirus vendors almost imply that if you buy the higher priced antivirus software, it's going to catch more for you. Or that <clears throat> some people categorize, they think that, oh, that's malware. It's not, it's not a virus, it's malware. So since it's malware, it's just, you know, they just want me to click on the banner ads so they make some money that way, but certainly they're not defrauding me. Or, you know, there's all sorts of excuses that people come up with their own mind, but I'll tell you, the bottom, the bottom line is, is since, since there are such things as rootkits, and, so, and because your uh, internet browser is to be as friend, user-friendly as you want them to be, if your operating system would be as user-friendly as you want it to be, with the price that you end up paying is that it's very user friendly for the bad guys to take advantage of your user friendly environment so they could gather all your data in a user friendly way and sell it to a user friendly market that wants to use your identity <laughs> I don't know how to get the point across but <laughs> there are a lot of people that just stick their heads in the sand <laughs> so I'm gonna stop um, and uh, but yeah, another thing. I mean, it, uh, the uh, the infest. I have. More, I just keep thinking of that. Uh, the, the level of infestation is so high that eventually anybody that that has a Facebook account and has more than ten friends <laughs> assigned to them, I only have twenty. Is eventually, in a matter of a month or two, going to find out that one of their friends. Uh, is posting links to Akai Berry or things out of character and you go there, well that's a drive-by download too. And your computer's compromised, go ahead reinstall. Um, that's the way it is. Uh, one of my friends had his his uh, account hacked into. He barely goes to Facebook at all, only once in a while. And doesn't stay on that long, it just kind of gets off. And, uh, ends up that his, he probably can't log in anymore the next time he tries, which will probably be, I don't know, a month from now or whatever. But in the meantime, to 11 of 62 of his friends, he posted a link about how the Akai Berry has helped him lose weight, this, that, and the other thing, and it takes you to some fake news page, but it's not just spam. They want you to think it's just spam. Now, ah. Oh, and the, the one fallacy that's out there is that people constantly say, I'll continue, 